I wanted to take my other cars, but they're outside and it's raining. So I guess we'll go into the basement and to the reserve parking spot and take the Tesla because I got miles to burn on it. As a matter of fact, you know what? Today, I'm going to do a video for you guys on buying versus leasing. Yes, one of the videos that you guys have been asking for relentlessly. So I had a bunch of other videos in, for, in front of that, but I'm gonna do buying versus leasing on this one. And yeah, let's talk about it. Rita's always petitioning me to take this car. So we gotta unhook it. But yeah, so buying versus leasing. What exactly do you guys want to know? Do you want to know about it from a business perspective? Do you want to know the pros and cons? Do you just want to know general information? What is it do you want to know? Or do you want to know everything? Because there's information out there, but if you want me to give you the game from my perspective and looking at things from a business perspective like I always am, yeah, let's do that. So I just came over from the Rolex store talking to my authorized dealer about the new timepiece that I want and the timeline on getting it and everything like that. But that's not what you guys are here for. You guys are here for a conversation about buying versus leasing. And so let me preface this conversation by saying that I gave you a video about how cars are not an asset, right? But I also want to give you the full game when it comes to you still having to buy a car because a lot of you guys are still going to purchase a car and most of you are not going to drive it until it dies so you can get the full value out of it whatever so on and so forth right but i also want to hit you from a business perspective and give you the insight in the game as far as buying versus leasing with regard to that also oh man face coverings are required i like them lebrons right there yeah they're kind of dope i might go ahead and pick up a pair of those today but um buying versus leasing right so let's just set the, the the precedent by saying that we all know that cars immediately start depreciating the minute that you drive it off the lot most of them depreciate at least 10 percent the minute that you drive it off the lot so if you're buying a car you have to understand that now you are in the hole at least 10 percent at the very least you are in the hole when it comes to the value of the car regardless of how much you put down so we don't really care about how much we put down when it comes to a car the only thing that we care about is the interest rate often at times when it comes to leasing you get a lower payment right and that is the thing that's most important to people is that's how they structure their budget they structure their monthly and their weekly and bi-weekly budget by how much their payment is so if you decide that you want to lease automatically you ahead because you're going to get a lower payment. Also, when it comes to leasing, one of the benefits is that it comes with warranties. Um, a lot of times it comes with oil changes and maintenance. It's a lot of incentives that comes along with leasing. And then again, you often get a lower rate. When it comes to buying, you have to take into consideration that once you finance a car based off of your interest rate, and we wanna get the lowest interest rate possible, right? Because every time you make a car payment based off of that interest rate, there's a portion of it that goes to the finance company because that's the interest that you're paying on it if you look at the statement and then there's a portion that goes to the principal which is often the amount that is owed on the exact loan all right so you following me if you're leasing a car you're basically getting a subscription and then obviously there's nuances and there's some things that you got to take care of like tires and stuff like that but you're basically paying a subscription but it's like Netflix for cars, leasing. You plan a subscription, you plan a set amount, and it's forever if you wanna to continue to lease forever. If you wanna buy a car, the only way it benefits you to buy a car is if you drive it forever. And that way you truly get the value out of it. And you buying a car and then buying another car, often at times you can do the calculation and it depends on whatever your interest rate is. But ultimately what it comes down to is that if you're going to continue to have a car payment, you wanna have the, the cheapest car payment possible. But I don't even look at things like that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I look at everything from a business perspective. So from a business perspective, it's completely different because it is a greater incentive, in my opinion, to lease a car than it is to buy one. Now, the caveat to that is that you have to have a personal car 
a personal vehicle that you already drive and you use for personal use and you cannot write that off. You cannot write a vehicle off that you're using for personal use, but then at the same time, in order to be able to write off a car for business purposes, whether you buying it or you leasing it, you still have to have a personal vehicle because you can't have one vehicle and then write it all off. The IRS and our governing body, to a larger extent, wants to make sure that you're not using something personally that you're supposed to be using for business, which makes sense. So, car that I have for personal use, very, 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 very cheap. Again, I choose to lease, but my personal vehicle is pretty cheap. My other vehicles that I use, often at times those come along with or for business purposes, whether it be for the restaurant, whether it be for me going back and forth out of town for content creation. All of this stuff is a tax write-off, and when you lease, you can write off the entirety of the lease payment, right? Which also includes the insurance, the maintenance, the mileage, everything that comes along with owning that vehicle, you can write it off in its entirety. The reason why I choose to lease versus buy when it comes to personal vehicles is because when you're buying, then you have to do a completely different calculation, especially when it comes to depreciation. And then when you sell the car, you have to account for it and you might have to pay taxes and all of these other things. It just makes it difficult, but it's much easier to not have to worry about the maintenance and all of the stuff that comes along with it. And then with the fact that I write off the entirety of the payment because I own businesses that I can truly justify that I'm using this vehicle for makes it that much more pleasurable when it comes to easily doing taxes at the end of the year and justifying the amount of money that I'm writing off for these cars. So what am I telling you guys? I'm telling you to get a business and legally, justifiably, and let me also preface all of this by saying that I am not a financial advisor. I am just a businessman that have made a lot of money. I got rich and I'm showing you how you can keep more of your money in your pocket. I am not a financial advisor, so I'm not telling you what to do. I'm simply advising you and giving you some insight into what I've done. The point that I'm making again is that if you have a business, you start a business that you need a vehicle for, make sure that you have a personal vehicle first, that you're doing your everyday menial tasks that's not related to the business, and then the car that you choose to buy or lease there are different rules when it comes to what you need to account for on both ends. I preferably prefer to lease a car, especially when it comes to business purposes, but I lease my cars outright because I just don't want to deal with the day-to-day -day things because my time is my currency, right? I don't have time to be driving a car until it dies and then getting stuff. I, I ain't got time for none of that. That don't mean that I haven't done it in my lifetime because when it made sense, well, my time wasn't as worth as much as it is now. And for those of you that are in the Patreon, make sure you check out the Patreon and the details, drink description in the details. When my time wasn't as worth as much as it is now, I could justifiably make the case for owning a car and driving it till it dies. As a matter of fact, I've told a story, my wife, on one of my live streams, when my wife came on, we told a story about how I drove my Cadillac STS literally for over like close to 300,000 miles. The door didn't even work. It was blowing black smoke. It was by the grace of God that I got home without that car just completely exploding. And then I still sold it right after that, the very next day as is, all right? So I've lived it on both ends, but if you're choosing to get into the car business, which is a depreciating asset, unless you're using this vehicle to make more money for you such as owning a business owning a business then you should a drive it till it dies if you want to truly get the most value out of it and this is on a personal level or b be able to stomach the idea that you will be paying a monthly lease forever but you will have a lower car payment which a lot of people wind up paying a car payment for the rest of their life anyway because they wind up just not liking the car that they want and then rolling it into the car that they wind up buying or whatever anyway but make sure you weigh both pros and cons when it comes to looking at everything and look at everything from a business perspective i'm advising you to start a business i'm advising you to 
make sure that that, vi that business justifiably can write off the expenses when it comes to leasing a vehicle. And I like the clean accounting of leasing a vehicle and writing off the entirety of the lease payment as a business expense related to my business. All right, so if you guys have any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. I can go into uh, depth a little bit deeper on this on this subject if you guys want me to. And I think one of the next videos that I'm also going to make is um, the streams of income. I want to show y'all how to get multiple streams of income so y'all can really get to the bag. All right. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.